Hi my loves, hope you're all doing okay. So I've just got this really cute, quick and easy, simple um, ombre to show you. Um, so I've removed all her previous design. I thought I'd recorded doing so, but hey ho, I didn't press record, just for a change. So I've etched a nail plate, um, pushed back the cuticles, um, prepped and dehydrated and added a clear base. So now, as always with my ombres, I'm starting on the free edge. And you always want to start with your darker colour as well. So this is um, CJP Forget Me Not. Oh, it's so pretty. I absolutely adore it. So I've feathered that back down the nail and blended it right back into nothing and just on a bigger nail I'll come in just at the blend line and place my bead of the next colour and then pat it down flush into the nail and then swipe it up the nail if I find I've got too much product covering that first colour I will just come back in wet my brush and swipe some of that away So cherry blossom blush again, just at the cuticle, tucking that in, and I'm using my big boy brush. See I had just a little bit too much there and it was just going to cover my next colour again so I just swiped some of that bead away because I didn't need it all. And then once I'm happy with the blend I will then come in with crystal glass. And if I've already built my apex with my um, pink, which I have done, I will just literally cap over that blend. I don't really want to add any more bulk to that cuticle area. So again, place your bead on, straight away turn your brush around and start blending that down. And you can see it just feathers all the way down into nothing so that there's just the natural nail bed showing. And you'll get such a, be a better blend if you don't leave any harsh lines. So I always do, th do it this way, pop your bead on, feather it backwards straight away. And then you're usually good to go. Um, I obviously don't always do my ombres starting at the um, free edge, mostly I do, um, but if I'm doing it, mixing it up a bit and doing it a different way around, um, I always go in with a darker colour first. <clears throat> These colours are so pretty together, I absolutely love them. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for shaping videos and that, so I did leave the filing in this one. Um, but, as you can see on the next nail I'm about to do, I've, I've already shaped it, even though I've not applied on there yet. Basically, I'll remove the old design with my e-file then whilst I'm coming in etching the nail plate I find it works better for me if I reshape before application as well I find I get a better shape that way so there's not a lot of filing to do once you've got more product on there if you see what I mean um, so yeah if you if you come in like I have it even for the set even if it's an infill or even if it's a new set, once you've got your tip on, added your clear layer. Actually, no, I will put my tip on and then shape it. Um, and I know some people just think this is a waste of time because obviously you're going to come in and shape it again afterwards. But I just find it makes for a better shape for me. I get a much crisper shape if I do it this way around. So... And to be honest, it's like an extra five minutes on top of the service time anyway, so it's not a huge, huge amount of time. So 
So then obviously because the free edge is already pre-shaped, I'm literally keep my application as neat as possible so then I've got much less to do afterwards as well. And all I've got to really do is just sharpen up those corners again. I suppose it just it's about finding a way that works better for you. You know, we all work differently. Um so it's about trying different techniques, I suppose. Coming on to piling, same as always. So I just need to remove a bit of the bulk from the side walls, um, blending that free edge. Blending that free edge. I need to remove a bit of bulk from the side walls, and make the cuticle area nice and flush, and then just whip over the top to make sure there's no lumps or bumps. But as always, um, side walls first, uh, free edge, and then around the cuticle area. And then I just run the e file just underneath the free edge just to thin that out a bit because sometimes over redesigns you can carry a bit of bulk on that free edge there because you want your credit card thickness so um, instead of taking it off the top and thinning the colour right out so here I'm just doing the same on this one as well So file underneath, making sure that's coming out dead straight. 
from the nail. Then onto your side walls, keeping your file dead flat against the sides as you're filing. Same on the free edge as well. Then you want to come up from one side all on over top of the nail. And then back down the other side. Just was in a bit of length of there, my e file. I always use a medium carbide safety bit, and I get all my e file bits from um, Chrissy Pierce at Nail Dot Supplies. I'll leave her link below for you as well if you want to check them out. She also stocks um, lots of stamping plates and polishes. She uses the CJS um, polishes and the clear jelly stampers, and they're just amazing I mean you obviously want to put a little bit of pressure on the file when you're doing the free edge and you're taking in the side walls as well you know you've got to be quite firm but obviously not as firm where you're bending your file and you're breaking your client's finger if you know what I mean so you know let that acrylic know who's boss who's in charge but to be fair CJP is really beautiful to files anyway so it's nice and soft to file so it really doesn't take that much work to be honest And that's it, just coming in my top coat, just going to cure this in my LED lamp for 60 seconds and then always leave that top coat to cool down for at least a minute before you come in with the cuticle oil and then I'll leave you a finished shot at the end. As always, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye!